So let me give you a little bit of a challenge. It's actually not a very challenging challenge, but I just want you to get some comfort, if you will, actually editing Spark code and seeing it make a difference, give you a little bit of confidence that you can actually do this stuff. So a couple of times we've alluded to the fact that our results in our exercises where we were looking at the worst rated movies weren't very meaningful because we had a lot of results that were just rated by one person. And just because one person gives a movie a one-star rating, is it really fair to call that a bad movie? Maybe that person just had some unique taste of their own that, that thought it was bad, but everyone else thought it was good. Who knows? So let's uh, increase our little level of confidence here. And what I want you to do is go back to both the RDD-based version of the script and the data frame-based version of the script and filter the results such that they only give me movies that were rated by at least 10 people. And then when we look at the lowest average rated movies of movies that were rated by more than 10 people, I think we can say with a little bit more confidence that those are truly bad movies. Now, if you think that's enough to go on, hit stop now and go give it a try. But if you need some help, a little more guidance, spoiler alert, I'm going to kind of give you the answers here to some extent. So remember, RDDs have a filter function you can use, and all you do is pass in some sort of function that will determine whether or not a row gets retained. So it needs to be some Boolean expression that returns true if the row should be kept or false if it should be discarded. And if you read through this little example here, it pretty much gives you the answer of how to do this. Some very strong hints there. So if you're not quite comfortable with scripting or Python yet, you might want to read that closely because it's going to give you some pretty strong guidance. Data frames, just as easy. They also have a filter function. It works a little bit differently, though, in that you don't pass in a function on data frames, but rather an expression. So for example, if you had a data frame that had a count column in it, just hypothetically speaking, you could call a filter on that data frame with the expression count is greater than 10 to return a new data frame that only contains values greater than 10 in the count column. Okay, so with that, you should have everything you need to go and uh, just open up a session on your little fake cluster there. You can use the nano editor that we installed earlier in the class to actually edit those scripts. And you know, if you do get stuck, there actually are solutions included in that spark.zip file as well. They have the word popular in the script names because they are filtered to only have popular movies. So have at it. And when you're ready, have a look at the next lecture where I'll show you my solution and we'll walk through how it works.